I'm Mike Buchel. Um, I have a you know, little company called Analytical. We do ad tech stuff. Um, I've been in the ad tech space going on 18 freaking years. Um, yeah, <laughs> lots of stuff in, in performance marketing. It's pretty much the, the technology that helps run the advertising uh, on your blog, on, if you're a publisher, help you monetize. Um, I've, speak, I've spoken at this conference, I've lost count, you know, how many times, either in panels or, or presentations, um, other conferences, just talking about the industry. This is the first time where it's, uh, I, I think we, I wanted to take a step back and kind of realize why did we start doing this? You know, we wanted something that would fit our lifestyle, we wanted something that um, we enjoyed doing, we wanted something that, you know, got us friends uh, within the same industry. Uh, so this is uh, pretty much what I've been doing a lot more focus on, I should say, over the last two years. You know, I've been doing it all my life, but really focusing on it for the last two years. Um, so uh, morning routines, mindfulness, making money. I wanted to put it all together. So why, why did I have this idea in my head that, you know, I needed to organize my day and, you know, and why doing things in the morning? So let's see how this clicker thing works. Hey, look at that. All right, so why did I do this? I, I don't, also in my presentations, I'm horrible at presentations. I'd rather talk to you, you know, so <laughs> I have very few bullet points there early on, kind of like what, what Sean did. Oh, if anyone saw Sean's uh, presentation earlier today, it was absolutely fantastic. Be set to lower your expectations. <laughs> So what did I start doing this? You know, I, I was in a place where I wanted to get healthy. I wanted to get control of my day. I wanted to get focused. I wanted to be more productive. And overall, I wanted to be a better person. And I'm going to show uh, what I mean by all this. So um, when I say getting healthy, I got to say this. I'm not a doctor. I don't, you know, don't listen to me about what's a good diet for you. Don't listen to me about how to exercise. Consult your own physician or you know, crystal ball. I don't care. Uh, but I'll tell you about what worked for me and how it helped me be where I am now, how, how it helped me with my business, how it just it, it, uh, got me going. Um, so I was also just having a conversation the other day. It really ref I reflected on another reason why I started doing this and, and what I had going good in my life and what I didn't have you know, going well in my life. Uh, two years ago, I fell. I was just, it was actually here in Times Square. I was just walking around, I'm from New York, so I was walking around in Times Square, which no New Yorker should ever be in Times Square. Uh, I unfortunately was at the time. And I was walking, and the next thing I know, I was kissing the pavement, and I have no idea what happened to me. I was walking fine, and that was it. I was on the floor, I broke my elbow, I dislocated my shoulder. Um, I kind of like to think that aliens zapped me out for a split second and did all kinds of experiments on me and then kind of fudged the landing when they put me back. So I was just like out. Uh, but that got me thinking, like, I have no idea why I fell. I have no idea what happened. Nobody's, no doctor has been able to explain it to me. But it, that was like a wake-up call where I should get my shit together, you know, in, in other areas in life, especially in, in my health. Um, but my business was, what was going well. Um, my relationships were going well, some weren't, but like I said, I wanted to fix the whole thing. I wanted to get better at it. So morning routines. This is kind of a combination that worked well for me. I call them certain things. You can call them whatever. Um, prayers, saying, quotes, affirmations. I mean, when I say things like, like prayers, I don't know what else to call them is why I say something like that. It might mean for you maybe praying to God. I don't know. Uh, what I did is, is just worked on things that, wrote, I wrote down things that meant something to me, and it came in a way now where it, 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 it helps me focus immediately in the morning when my mind is blank um, on what I want to do, on, on my health, on my family, on people I love, on my friends, on um, my, excuse me, on my business, uh, things I want in the future. Just things to help me get going and get, and get focused and get, get into a right mindset, into a positive mindset of, of things I can do that day. Excuse me. <clears throat> Next, I do things like, like uh, goal setting. Focus things on, on I have to do that day and also long term. Because the things that you're doing, um, the little things you're doing that day should be moving you toward your long term goals. 
uh, and that's in, in health, in wealth, in relationships. Uh, what, am, what am I doing that day for business that's going to get me what I need to do in five years? And I, I focus on that. Uh, this next one, gratitude, is something I, I, I didn't have it in my morning routine for a very long time, like years. I, I said, I really don't need something like that. I don't understand why do I need to be you know, thankful. For what, for what I have. Why do I, need, why do I need to remind myself or something like that? But I started putting it in, just trying to think of the things that I was thankful for and, and, and grateful for. Um, my friends, my, the health that I do have, you know, and, and for, you know, the, how long I've had it. Um, the lessons I learned. The people who don't like me, because you actually learn something from the people who don't like you. You know, you could get into a fight or you can say, hey, this is a good way that maybe I can learn something about how to either deal with myself as I'm speaking to people like this or learn why, why, are, uh, why am I getting into these situations over and over again. Maybe there's something going on that I'm not even aware of that's like a loop that I got into. Um, so that really changed, you know, when I added, when I added the gratitude part. And I noticed uh, a lot of things happen where... Um, my mindset expanded. So that, that's something to, I wish I put it in earlier, I should say. You know, it, it, it's been very good the uh, last two years. Um, exercise. Something, just get up and move and do something. Like I said, I'm not going to tell you what to do. You know, for me, I, you know, back in, in my 20s, I used to be, you know, a gym rat. I used to be a power lifter. I knew what I was doing. I ate right. Um, I became a type, well, I'm a type 1 diabetic now. I, I, can't, I became a type 2. They actually changed. Uh, I don't know if you want to know anything about diabetes, but my, uh, I actually stopped producing insulin along the way, which made me a type 1, which is crazy. Uh, so I became, I was always very conscious of what I ate. Uh, and I'm much more in tune to my body now because of, of, I'm listening to how it responds to exercise. And it responds differently at, you know, at my age now than it did when I was in my early 20s. It's a big difference. So some kind of exercise. For me, I'm, I, you know, I consider myself a little hardcore. I go to the gym. I work out with weights. I, I, you know, I do sprinting. You know, just getting out and stretching. Do something. Get, the blood, get, get your blood going. Um, meditation and mindfulness. I put, I put this together. Now, I've been an on and off practitioner of meditation really uh, going 25 years or something like that. It all happened when, uh, you know, 10,000 years ago in the Stone Age, um, back in college, I took, a, uh, I took a class of mythology because I thought it was going to be a real easy A, you know, learn about the Greek gods and, and uh, get out of it. But the, actually the teacher, uh, Professor Mott, I still remember him, he, he got us into, uh, uh, and I'll be talking about this a little bit, uh, a little bit later, um, other cultures, other religion, uh, Buddhism, Meditation, what, what is it about? And I, I got interested in that. I really got very much interested in Zen Buddhism uh, and the idea of trying to understand how your mind works, understand uh, how to be as present as you can within the moment because the only thing that exists is the moment. You know, the past doesn't exist. The future hasn't happened yet. The entire world, the entire universe is happening in this one instant. And I was fascinated by that. So um, just getting to understand how your mind thinks. And you start to realize what I, what I like to call the architect, the architecture of your thought. You, know, you think the world is a certain way, but it's actually the way that you set your mind up to think it is. So it, if you can get into understanding the situations that you get into, the, maybe the loops in your head, you can understand how you created your thought process. And when you realize that it's just a concept, you can change the way you think. So um, mindfulness is a part of that. That allows you to concentrate more on what's important in the moment. It allows you to make better decisions. Um, allows you to make uh, better decisions quicker. Quicker, you know, because you don't want to. You don't mess around when you realize. Okay, this is this is the solution, or this is what hap is what happening, or this is how you get how you fix it. You don't waste time, and you just get, get to the point. Uh, writing and reading. Uh, writing in the morning for me, I have a journal. I jot down maybe two paragraphs of everything that I'm thinking of the moment, uh, thinking in the morning, everything I have to get done, 
thinking of some people I may want to call, thinking, thinking of my you know, family, thinking of whatever. Just get what's in here, any, any doubts I have, any, uh, any concerns, just get what's up here onto paper because you can kind of deal with it better. You know, when it's not running around up here, you can deal with it better when it's just listed down, at least for me, when it's listed down. Uh, reading, I just pick up something either uh, entertaining or uh, something that's going to help me uh, like a business book or a biography, you know, just get through uh, maybe a half hour reading. I have time in the morning for a half hour, so I do that just to, again, like prime the mind of, uh, of, of getting ready for the day. And this combination of this, I'm, I'm lucky enough I can get an hour to an hour and a half in the morning because I have that, that kind of block in time. So I, I, I do stuff like that. And it also depends on how much time I have, how much, you know, how much time I can go to the gym or if not. Uh, I base the whole thing, uh, the, the version I have right now, it's always important for me to go back and rework what's there because you change and circumstances change and, and, and the, you know, um, what you want changes. So it's always, I always go back and to make sure it doesn't become something that hinders me, you know, to make sure it's not something that, okay, I'm stuck in this process now. I want to make sure I can always break the process so I can grow and get a better, uh, more um, growth, growth mindset, I should say. Uh, so I got, I got the, the framework of something like this from a guy named Hal uh, Elrod, who has an amazing story. Um, he, he, he should be a quadriplegic at best, uh, but he's not. And he actually wrote this amazing book, which I have in the references, called uh, Miracle Morning, uh, where he goes over this, uh, you know, something called savers. So it's, it's silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing, which was a stretch, you know, for, for writing, you know, I guess you, you could have put the W in there, it could have been like Swaver or something. But uh, based on the, fra of the framework, um, I took this and then I just changed it to how, how it could fit my needs. So what, what am I looking for for the day and just fit it that way. Uh, mindfulness I spoke about a little bit. The idea of, of not getting lost, I guess you can say, within your own ego and understand then the present moment. We're all here in the present moment. So it allows you to see the big picture in the smallest details. I, th I think one of my favorite quotes, um, I think it's by Vince Lombardi, is you know, how you do one thing is how you do everything. You know, it, it's, it's the idea of uh, integrity of being authentic. You know, it's, it's, you know, we, we, I, the way I treat you know, someone I don't know is the same way I treat somebody who I've known for a long time. Um, or the, you know, the, way you treat, the way you treat your wait staff you know, shows a lot about you you know, uh, you know how, about how you think of other people. So um, it gives you insights into your own thought process. You know, it's, uh, you know, you start noticing certain loops. I, I mentioned that again because you can get trapped uh, without even realizing how you're thinking. You might notice that you're always starting, since people here, there's business conferences, you know, you, you have affiliates and managers and, and product people here and, and merchants. Y you might be trying to get to that break some plateau you're in, in uh, whatever your business is, and you start realizing you get in these same loops and you just can't get out, you gotta take a break and get away from that and try to break that loop. Realize you're in one and say, okay, approach the problem differently. And one, one of the ways I do that is you know, when I realize I'm doing something that has led me nowhere, take a step back and say, okay, what if everything I'm doing right now is wrong? And how would I approach that? How would, how would I look at it from a different point of view? Uh, and that has helped me tremendously, just, just realize things in business and made uh, connections I would not have made before uh, and helped me, helped me grow my business. Um, it, uh, it gives me understanding the people and the value that you could bring them because you understand that the things that you're going through, either good or bad or neutral or whatever, everyone else is going through those things too. Um, one of the best things I had, uh, you know, when dealing, you know, I used to work at companies um, where... The, a lot of the people in my, on my staff, they had specific degrees, like they were, they were programmers or they, they knew marketing. I was coming in there with a, um, uh, a philosophy and literature background. For some reason, I got into computers. <laughs> so that, that different way of thinking allowed me to approach it as, at a more human, I want to say human aspect, but it's more of a, look, I'm not here showing you how the technology is going to fix your product or this is this is great. I'm going to show you how we can fix your business problems because you want to go take your fiance out, 
you know, l later that evening or, or whatever. I'm thinking from a, looking at it from more of a human pers perspective. What are, what are the problems that everyone is going through and how can we fix them? Um, so you understand, in, in trying to understand the other person, you really become to understand yourself. And I think that's, you know, the most important thing to get out of this. Um, clarity and decisive action, which I mentioned before, you know, when, when you can get to that point, um, realize what's going on in the moment, you see the clarity of whatever solution you have, and there's really no reason to hesitate after that. Take the action right there. Um, so mindfulness, as a, as, from a business perspective, has changed things for me over the last two years. Uh, for productivity, uh, I've used a lot of different things to get things done. I have, I have a problem where I get bored easily. You know, it's not, it's not attention deficit disorder. It's just like I, I get bored doing the same thing either over and over again, or I need to do something new. I need a new toy after like so, so long. Uh, the Pomodoro technique, uh, I have used, I have, I have found it, it's the best thing I've ever used. So I don't know if, any, if anyone knows what this is. It's, it's the idea of um, you work on a task for 50 minutes, 10 minute break after that. Go take a walk, you know, uh, you know, have some water, I don't know. And then you come back and again, another 50 minutes, another 10 minute break. And then, you know, you continuously do it and there's a longer break after that. I found, I mean, you probably found this too. I mean, you, you're working on something, you're stuck on something. Um, and you're like, forget it, I'm going to take a walk. You take a nice walk, you come back, and like the answer just comes to you. you know, don't work. I used to do this all the time. Don't work on something straight through. And like I said, for me, I get bored. So if I'm working on something straight for like three hours, I'm like, you know, the heck with this. Next thing I know, I'm on Facebook you know, and, and my day shot. So I stopped doing that, and my production level went through the roof. Thanks. Um, all right, so I got some resources here. And this is, this is actually what the majority of what I wanted to talk to you. So if you're looking into organizing your day, understand, um, try, try to under, you know, understand yourself, understand your business, get better in, in health and wealth, uh, your life, your relationships, your, you know, your business partners. Um, these are the kinds of resources that I went out looking for, and I found that uh, the ones I'm going to talk about right now are the best ones I've ever, I've ever uh, had. So they just showed me a sign for fi I'm 15 minutes in, so i got to hurry. Um, Mel Robbins, The Five Second Rule. This is a great book. It's actually, you can use YouTube. You can find her on there. The idea is um, you wake up in the morning, you immediately count down, five, you know, five, four, three, two, one. You get the hell out of bed, and that's it. You know, you're up, you're doing things. And she found that uh, she got very much into studying the mind and how it wants to protect you. It wants to be very conservative. It doesn't want you to take risks because it wants you to stay alive. Um, unfortunately, well, fortunately, I should say right now, you know, we're not being hunted by saber-toothed tigers. We can, you know, the kind of risks we have are not the kind of risks that our ancestors once had. So she found out it's also very good to help you take those risks quicker. You know, ask out the girl, 54321, ask her out. You know, just, just things like that. You know, make the business call. Make the phone call to your mother. You know, make the phone call to your, to your business partner. Just do it because if you, if you wait too long, your brain kicks in and says, wait a minute, you got to be safe. So this was an excellent book, Mel Robbins, uh, searcher on YouTube. Uh, Tom uh, Bilyeu, Impact Theory. Search, he's got this podcast, search on YouTube. Find it, it's fantastic. He is a former uh, co-founder of Quest Nutrition. I love their brownie bars. Um, I do. <laughs> um, fantastic, fantastic um, Q&A sessions, interviews. He interviewed Mel Robbins where she came in uh, with the, uh, she's been quoted now saying motivation is bullshit. The quote is actually motivation is garbage. But um, because motivation is never there when you need it. It's always there the night before. You know, you're going to wake up in the morning, got everything done, you got your whole list, and then you wake up in the morning and you're like, who the heck was that person from last night? You know, because you're not doing it. So that's why she came up with the idea of executing um, you know, the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 instead of just being motivated to go, to go do it. Uh, Hal, El uh, Hal Elrod, I mentioned him before, the book, The Miracle Morning. I think he has a podcast as well. This will show you about that savers method, about to help you um, get your routine together in the morning. Tim Ferriss, and he has something called the Five Minute Journal. There's also something out there called the Bullet Journal. Um, I was doing something like this for years. I just never knew it was called something. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's writing down your thoughts and your day and what you need and uh, all in order. And at the end of the day, where are you? Um, 
Tim Ferriss, I think, I think everybody should know him by now, like number one podcast um, on business and you know, life hacking. Um, Bullet Journal, again, is something different, but you can search on him uh, to get his five-minute journal. Brad Warner, my favorite punk rock uh, Zen monk. This guy, uh, I actually met him, which was amazing. I got him into a, a, a uh, Zen monastery to, to, to talk over where I used to live. Um, he was a punk rock guy who also just got into Zen, became a, became a monk. His stuff is very approachable if you want to learn about meditation, quieting the mind, understanding your thoughts, uh, getting out of loops. Uh, three of my favorite books, Hardcore Zen, Sit Down and Shut Up, which is pretty much meditation. And he just has a book on um, where he did a translation on one of their, a, a Buddhist teacher, uh, Dogen. Uh, and it, the American translation for his book is Don't Be a Jerk. Uh, and it's actually fantastic. He's very approachable, very readable. And, you know, like I say, he still plays bass in a punk rock band. Um, Headspace. I, I am old school uh, when I learned about, about meditation. I, I started off, you know, just staring at a wall. And, um, and a lot of people think, who just want to get into something about meditation. And I just do it 10 minutes a day, by the way. It's not something you have to do hours at. Um, I think there's a point. You know, there, there is no goal to it. The idea is that you're slowing down, you're looking at your thoughts, you're understanding, why am I thinking like that? You know, what, why, okay, okay, here, it's like a passing, you're on the side of the road, like, here's a passing car, that passing car is anger. You know, don't chase it, because you're going to call, you know, you got to start a traffic jam. Just understand what it is and where it goes. Headspace was absolutely, I, I didn't like the idea at first, I tried it, I loved it. Uh, you can get an Android and an iPhone, highly recommend this in the morning. Um, Joseph Campbell, this is a guy, again, my mythology teacher told me about, changed my life back then. It, it really did. Uh, Joseph Campbell, The Power of Myth, is an interview series he did with Bill Moyers. You can actually find it on YouTube someplace. There's a book about it. He's the guy who came up with the hero's journey. If anyone really knows their Star Wars, uh, Luke is based Star Wars on the hero's journey. So it's, if you think about, not to get off on a techie thing, you know, like a sci-fi thing, if you, hear about, if you think about what Luke went through, that is exactly what the hero's journey is. That's the story in your head. That's the narrative you're telling yourself. You know, it you really comes down to two things about how you're feeling. It's either your bio, it's a part of your biology, which if you want to change something, you might be medication or you might need some chocolate. I don't know. And it's also the story you're telling yourself. You may not even be aware you are telling yourself a story, but it, you are. And when you realize that, you can tell yourself a different story. You're great at business. You're great at networking. You're great at making, uh, making friends and meeting people. You're very handsome and confident. You know, you, these are the kind of things you tell yourself. Alan Watts, I'll mention real quick, he, was, uh, he is all over YouTube, all his lectures and speeches. You want to learn uh, a Western approach to understand this very Eastern meditation idea. He is the guy who makes it very easy to understand. He was also very human. He was a raging alcoholic, which is just incredible <laughs> because you listen to his wisdom and then you, you think, I believe he actually died from it. But brilliant guy. Um, and I'll talk about very quickly on this next slide. Um, just a quick note on anxiety. Uh, we all get anxious, and I think being entrepreneurs and people in business, we go out of their minds. And there's a great article, I'm sorry, a great video on, uh, by Alan Watts on anxiety. And the idea is, it's as if once you're born, you're kicked off a cliff, okay? And we're all, you know, plummeting down to earth. Hopefully, it will take us 90, 100 years to hit the bottom. Uh, but it's as if when you did, a big piece of rock fell down with you and you just grabbed onto that thing. You're holding on to dear life, you're, you're falling anyway, but you're saying, oh, I got this rock. And, you know, and, th and this rock is all your obligations, it's the reasons why you do things, it's, it's the stuff you go crazy about, the stuff that keeps you up at night. And, it's like, and you just hold on to it as much as you can and you're going out of your mind, but you're, you're, you're falling to your death anyway. And you re when you realize that holding on to this rock is not serving you, you know, you let go of the damn rock <laughs> and try to enjoy the ride on the way down as much as you can. Um, if you want to search for a much better explanation than that, he also gives a great one about uh, being a, a, uh, a water example valve, like river, uh, you know, being going down a stream. Uh, just search Alan Watts and anxiety um, uh, for a YouTube channel. Now, I had one more slide, but I don't think it's here because it looks blank, and I'm kind of disappointed by that. 
because I was going to say again, once again, um, you know, don't listen to me about health, don't listen to me about, you know, talk to your doctor and all that, because I wanted to show me two years ago, but I don't think it's here. No, it's not there. It didn't come. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> well, if anybody knew me two years ago, I, you know, I dropped 40 pounds. Um, and I, I actually have some, uh, it was a picture of me here, you know, giving, I think, the last, the last talk I did, I was talking about the mobile industry, which is very different than this. Uh, and also me, you know, at my, my friend's birthday party in a pirate costume, which is also like a usual, you know, Tuesday for me. Uh, <laughs> I'm disappointed it didn't come in. I must have had it in a format that didn't work, so, oh well. Um, so again, you know, I'm Mike at Analytical. If you actually want to talk business, you can get me here. I'm doing a demo where I'm talking about um, the stuff we do tomorrow. Uh, and if there's any questions or anything else that you want to go over, yeah, because I, I, think, I think we got time. They, I haven't really gotten uh, the word or anything. Yes, hi. Uh, hi. Quick question. You talked about meditation. Yeah. Oh, why I started doing that? No, oh, like, oh, that's... Oh, yeah, yeah, so, so I, start, I started doing that. I mean, you're talking to me back, you know, back when I was in college when, when I learned about it, and um, back then I was much more in, like, research mode and learning what would... I was very... It, there's lots of different forms of Buddhism, lots of different forms of meditation. It's become westernized now where you can just, you know... You know, a, you know, make meditation or something. There's probably a shack you can go buy it at. But it's um, for me. I, I was very much influenced by the Zen, the Japanese Zen Buddhist, and a lot of what they did was was to sit at a blank wall um, because they didn't want anything influencing their focus. They didn't want anything other than their mind. And you know, so you, I mean, I focus on my breath. Is what it is. You want to get. I mean, if you, I'm not going to do meditation with you guys right now, but it's like, it's like it's, I focus on on my breath and just the in and the out, and you know, and I focus on a count of that, and I focus on what thoughts am I feeling. If I lose, I mean, you always lose your head. I mean, it's not like you always. You're never going to not think. That's really, people think actually meditation makes you not think. It doesn't. You're always thinking. It's just that if you get lost in thought. You know, how many times you get lost in thought? It's like, you know, the classic example is like, who drove me home? You know, when you're the only driver. <laughs> you always get lost in thought. So the idea is just to focus back on your breath and your body and not go, you know, invent these stories, invent, you know, these memories. And next thing you know, you're reworking the memory and saying, wow, I should have said this, you know. And, and, and next thing you know, it, you're, you're not meditating anymore. You're somewhere else. But it's just training your mind in that. Good questions, yeah. For me, early is 6 a.m. I mean, I think that, I, I, one of the things what, I, what I've researched and, found and, and learned, I don't think it matters so much what time of day you get up, because I know there are, there are night owls here. My brother works the overnight shift, so I know he, he gets up like at 4 p.m. Um, but I have seen enough, especially if you put a business aspect to it on, on this, because that's a very big part of my life, my business. They, if you look at the entrepreneurs and the great business leaders out there, they're, they're getting up at four, five. And I think a lot of that is because, you know, the world wakes up and starts doing business, you know, at, at, at a certain hour. So for me, 5.30, 6 a.m. is usually when I get up. 6.30 gets in there every once in a while. Um, I do, I'll, I will say, you know, I'm not perfect. I, I say three out of, you know, seven, seven days, five, four, three, two, one, I'm up. The others, um, you know, I am a habit I'm trying to break. I grab that damn cell phone to see what was going on while I'm laying down in bed. But I try to get up within two minutes because any more than that, you know, I'm, I'm thinking I'm wasting my time. Yeah. Is there flexible amount of time to get up to do like six Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it, here, being here is a great example. You know, be, being here at the conferences, you know, is screwing up my routine. <laughs> so for me, it, it, I don't always meditate. I will, say, I will say that. I don't do it every day, but I am mindful of what I'm doing. I think a lot of that has to do with the practice that I've been doing, like, for 27 years now, um, where I am still very mindful of, of, of how I'm thinking, why I'm thinking. And I, al I always put in that 
question, that little crowbar into my head, why am I thinking that way? Why, what if what I'm thinking right now is completely wrong? Or how did I come to think that way? Apparently they're giving me the time. So um, three important things for me, just you know, being mindful, doing some kind of exercise. For me, I wake up, I'm, you know, something like this, I'm doing push-ups and body weight squats. Get the blood pumping, you know? Um, health, I still eat healthy, I eat a Quest bar. <laughs> and um, everything else I take care of. Steve Hall, photographer extraordinaire. <laughs> and, and lover of cheese. Um, there, that is true. There was one more question. They gave me time, but there, there was another question. Well, a couple of questions. We'll go on. I was just going to say, I appreciate you sharing because this is like my morning routine for freaking tea. Oh, that's awesome. Even have the accent on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Bro- New Long Island, yeah. I'm going to die one day. (laughs) And I don't like that. And I love my family. And, you know, I I want, I I, I really, and that gratitude part really freaking changed things. I I, like, I suddenly have like so much to, it's sappy, I'm sorry, but I I got like so much to give. I'm like, I don't want that taken away. That pisses me off. I'm going to (laughs) die. You know, but that's what did. There, There was another one. Yeah. Yeah. How many hours do you put in like on a single day focusing on your work? That depends on what the work is for the day. You know, I like I'll give you an example. I'm working on a project right now, uh, you know, a tech pro- a tech problem for the company, uh, my company I'm trying to do. That again is me. How many hours do I want? You know, it's a thing where entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, you know, all that. How many hours do we want to put in? If it's for a client, the answer is until it gets done. You know, if it's for me, I do have a tendency to be selfish and say, well, I'm only going to put five hours in, you know, inst- instead of eight hours, you know, because, you know, I want to, I want to see wrestling tonight. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I want to be selfish. So it, that will depend on what the work is at hand. Okay. So hours if I have to, you know, and that's usually if there's a client, you know, it's usually a client or it's usually like, I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill this week. <laughs> <laughs> You had a question. He asked it. He asked it. Okay. Any, any more? Okay. What do you do at night or the next Drink heavily. No. <laughs> no, actually, I, I, the last hour before I go to bed, I just, like, tune off, you know, just relax. Uh, there's, a gr- <laughs> there's a great tea. Are you, are, you familiar, are you familiar with Yogi brand tea? They do a, um, oh, God, what's the name? It, it's, a, it's a caramel sleep tea. I forgot what the heck it is. I, I had like one, the first time I tried it, I had one cup of this, I had to like crawl into bed. It was fantastic. It's just so relaxing. <laughs> but that's what I do. I mean, I make a se- exceptions too. I'm human. I'm like, I, I was out to 3 a.m. last night partying with friends. I mean, it's okay. You know, was that it? Because I, I think that was, that was time. We good? Well, I hope this was helpful for you. I mean, just find it, use it, you know, not only help your business, help yourself grow, you know, be better at life, because you got to remember, we all got into this because we wanted to have a better life, and not, let's not just go nuts and think everyone's out to get us, and you know, it's all about making money, but you know, enjoy it. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. <laughs>